Hi everyone, in this video, we're gonna create a footer using HTML block with a page builder. So let's go ahead and create an HTML block for the footer in the dashboard. HTML blocks. Add new item. Set any title and edit it through the page builder. Now let's create a container that will contain the logo and social icons. Using the left sidebar, you can both add elements and modify element settings. By clicking the Choose Image field, we can select our desired logo image from the Media Library. In the Advanced tab, we should set the custom width for the logo in the Width field. Make sure that the width is defined in pixels. Also, the first container contains the Social Buttons element. Let's define it and adjust it. We will have the label with our text, and the type will be as follow. Also, we need to change the icon styles to colored and change the size to small. You can see the label is displayed above the buttons, so let's set the label to inline in the style tab. For the container, we need to set the justify content property to space between. Also, set align items to center. This property controls how items are aligned vertically within the container. Center will vertically center all our elements, so the logo and social icons will be perfectly aligned on the same horizontal line. In the advanced tab, let's add the margin to the top and padding to the bottom. Our next step is to create a new container for the bottom part of the footer, which will hold our menu and contact form. It should have two equal columns. In the first column, we are going to define the inner container in which we will define the toggle element. The toggle element will help us to show the full menu on the desktop and a collapsible menu on mobile devices. Set any title and then inside the toggle element, we'll insert an extra menu list element Let's remove the title from the extra menu list element. We don't need it in this case. Each menu item also has additional settings where you can configure the link, label, and image. On desktop, we want the menu to always be open, so click on the toggle element and modify the state setting. To quickly create two additional menus, We'll duplicate this container twice. Right now, the menus are stacked vertically, so we need to edit the main container and change the direction to a horizontal row and align it to the center. Since we copied the menu, all three items are identical. Let's update the menu titles to differentiate them. Our second column will contain an inner container with a section title and a MailChimp form. In the section title, we need only the title and the text fields defined. In the Style tab, we need to change the alignment to left and set the color for the title. This container will have a background color, so we'll need to apply 20 pixels of padding, then set a background and configure the border radius. Next, we'll add a MailChimp form to this container. The container itself we will configure with horizontal row direction, justify content set to space between, and align item centered.
Below this will include an image showing payment options and an information box. For the information box, we'll only use the title and content fields Now we'll modify the information box type and set it to icon. In the image resolution field, we can set the custom option, which allows us to set the desired width and height for the icon. For alignment, we'll choose left for both text and image and set the vertical alignment to middle. So this is what our footer looks like on desktop right now. Now let's test how this displays on tablets and mobile devices. As you can see, our menus aren't displaying well. So let's set the container width to 100% for tablets and mobile devices. This will stack the containers vertically. Now we need to modify the main container direction and set it to column vertical. Now we need to modify the parent container direction and set it to column vertical. Now we'll do the same thing for the container with the toggle elements. Also in the advanced tab, we'll add some margin bottom to make a better view on mobile devices. Now we need to define that footer and theme settings. Footer. We need to define it in the footer content area. Time to check how our footer functions on the page. Here's our desktop footer. We should also check mobile version.